Hey there, it's Jacqueline, your professional matchmaker with Discover Love Matches. Lately, I've been having people ask, well, what's the difference between a professional matchmaker and online dating? And of course, I've been doing this for so long. I know, and I thought I talked about it, but you know what? That was a while ago. So I decided to kind of be my own little guinea pig, and I went and put a profile on an active dating site app that is out there just to kind of re-remind myself why I love what I do. <laughs> and I'm always open to meeting new people and thought, hey, maybe there'd be some cool people. Well, I have to say, I really like my program even more. Oh my gosh. So I put it super basic, very minimal, one picture, very limited, only answered as little questions as I absolutely had to. And my phone exploded. And it was so interesting to read the messages. Many of the people asking to connect were either trying to use guilt, uh, manipulation from being like, well, why don't you give me a chance? I don't understand why I don't get a chance. They sound so negative. Then there's a ton of people on there that really in all truth, they would never approach me somewhere else. They're in a completely different place, emotionally, spiritually, there's nothing we have in common. They're just superficially looking at my picture. And online dating is just that. It is a superficial world that encourages superficial behavior. But then if you don't respond to those people, they get irritated, they get annoyed, they get offended, they get upset. And then you're sitting there looking at all these profiles and reading these messages. And at first it feels nice to get the compliments, but then it's followed by an attitude or you might actually find someone you're kind of intrigued with and then they disappear. Good old ghosting. And what's interesting is that so many people are presenting themselves in a way that is not really inviting to check out. I think it's really interesting when people put a picture of their kid on their main picture. Like if you're scrolling through, you're thinking, is that a couple? You know, you don't know until you check out the profile. And then when they have all these pictures that are of scenery and, you know, their animal, the old the dead fish, you know, you're not really connecting with the person. And at my agency, I actually know who all these people are. And I'm looking at the pictures and I'm making suggestions. Of course, some people might want to put their dead picture or dead fish picture up. But you know, it's one of those things where there are profiles that I have noticed that I'm like, oh, that person's kind of interesting. But boy, I wish I had an extra button to push to say, hey, can somebody tell me something about this person? I'm a busy person. I don't have time to go out with a bunch of just random people. And that's, again, why I created in my agency an opportunity to actually ask me, ask me questions. I know my people. I can tell you that the owners of the dating apps do not know anybody on the those apps, there's no personal relationship with a single profile where I actually meet the people, we have mingles and socials and happy hour, and I do private consultations just so I can constantly be meeting people for my clients to discover. Those that sign up at our higher levels get the inside scoop from me. They can ask me questions, they can learn about the person. So many people upload crappy pictures, let's just be honest. And maybe they were doing it on their phone when they filled out the profile, so it's not as well done grammatically, or you know, it just doesn't have that flow. But because I know the person, I can talk about their laugh. I can talk about their engaging personality. I can talk about the positive. But you can't get that from an app. An app is just swiping. And as I was watching this show recently, it was talking about how basically one in three and one in five are ghosting or being ghosted, which means you've invested, you've opened up, you've connected, you might even have met the person and they disappear. And nobody on that app is gonna say, hey, let me go ask that person why they decided to stop talking to you. You know, you wanna learn, you wanna figure it out. Well. 
when you're in my agency, I'll message that person. I'll call that person and just ask them. And you know what's great is they are so wonderfully welcoming and telling me, you know, I just decided to stop dating them because they never said thank you when I paid the bill. They never seemed to be very engaged or they picked up the phone all the time on our date when it was not necessary reasons. I didn't feel them present. Well, they'll tell me that and I can give that information to the other person with love so that they know what they're doing to make it less enticing to date. And the other part that's really interesting is that the research is proving that with all of these dating apps, people are overwhelmed with the options. They're actually not helping. <laughs> there are so many great people. And yes, I totally get the online desire. The other night I was out with a friend, two friends. And as soon as we sat down, I thought we were going to have a conversation like voice to voice, eyes to eyes and laugh and giggle. Nope. They both pull, pulled out their phones and started swiping through those profiles. And they're like, look at him, look at him. Oh, let me tell you about this guy. And oh, and, and their phone's buzzing and all this. And I'm like, can we enjoy ourselves? Can we have fun together? I'm actually here present with you and I'm looking around the room and there are so many good looking people to talk to in real time. And this really hit me hard thinking how much time people, they dress themselves up, they get looking pretty, get their handsome on, and then they spend it on their phone when they could probably be talking to, meeting, interacting with somebody amazing that's maybe sitting down three stools or the table behind them, but they're not going to notice them because they're so programmed to an app, letting an app decide. And an app is so exhausting <laughs> because these are filled with people that nobody is verified, nobody's confirmed who they are, nobody has actually found anything. And it's like, there's no next step with it. It's just you deciding to superficially like I'll look at the pictures and go oh not my type not even respond oh he's kind of cute oh he didn't respond you know we're only looking at a picture we're not looking at any heart level we're not connecting and what's happening is that people are getting so watered down that the moment something's not quite working with somebody you are dating, you just go right back online. And this was happening even back when I started my agency in 2010. We didn't have as many apps, but it was the same idea. I remember meeting some people from a dating app before I became a matchmaker. And as soon as I got home, I would check and see that they were online. Well, I was irritated they were online thinking, oh, well, maybe that's their way of saying it wasn't a good date. But you know what? They might have been thinking the same thing when I had the little green light next to my name. How many times are we sabotaging a relationship connection because we're so much of a flip it this way, slide this way, go up that way, and it's all on a screen. It's just this little box that's deciding what you get to experience when there is this gorgeous, beautiful world out there of so many neat people. And you know what? When you meet somebody organically, you feel that spark. When I have events, I actually either know the person, have interacted with the person, I'll be adding a profile about that person. I'm going to learn more. So it's not just like bumper cars, you're bouncing off whoever happens to be in your area. You're actually connecting with real people. I love that when my matchmaking clients come to an event, they can go home and look on our match, matchmaking membership site and look up the profile and someone they were talking with and read more and have more information. I mean, that's exciting. It's another layer. They could ask me if they've hired me as their matchmaker and say, hey, what do you think about this person? But they're actually showing up for their life. They're showing up for what matters. And I want you to really think about this. What's the difference between online dating and a professional matchmaker? We actually are invested in you. We know you as a person. We're here for you. <laughs> like when I meet people, my Rolodex, my little black book is going through thinking, who can I introduce to who? Who's next? Who's the person? What's going to happen? Where on a dating app, it's an algorithm. I mean, we know that those are outdated and archaic in so many ways, but also it's all superficial. 
And it's creating superficial connections because we know the moment it doesn't work, you can go right back on and get another ego stroke from another person noticing you, or you put yourself out there and you're not getting a response and you don't realize it's because your pictures aren't clear. You're maybe not looking into the camera. There's so many tips that you could get from a professional to actually get the results you want. There are an abundance of amazing people online. I have no doubt about that. But what I'm talking about is the fact that do you really need all the garbage of filtering through all of them? Do you need people guilting you, anxiously messaging you, or being disrespectful to you, or ghosting you? Like, they don't know you enough to ghost you. But even that, you like someone, you're intrigued, you start sharing. Wouldn't it be nice to know what happened? So that's the big difference. In a nutshell, what happens with matchmaking? It's about, you're looking for a real relationship. If you're looking for a hookup, you know, I love this comment that was recently said was that online dating is speeding up the courtship process. Everybody knows that if you're online dating, you're going to have another round of options coming. So there's this anxiousness that they've got to show up, they got to deliver, they got to do everything instead of like letting the courtship unveil itself, letting the person not feel like they're competing with every single other pop-up on your screen. Like if you're out with friends, be with your friends because you might attract some really neat people. You know, too often we forget to look around. The other day I was out with two other lovely friends and I noticed three guys sitting at a table at another end of the restaurant, get up from the table and move around to sit next to us. Well, my other friends weren't available, so they weren't even noticing it. But it was the fact that they were trying, these gentlemen, to notice us. And it's that acknowledgement that they didn't sit there and look at their phones trying to do it. They physically got up and walked over to be more accessible. Make sure you're doing things to be approachable in the real world because you're looking for a real world relationship and watch out from anything that is over kind of filling your head like we filter what we have on our other social media but you can't really filter who messages you on a dating app and you know it's just on a picture i mean most of those profile sites all they do is show you the picture before they tell you anything. And that drives me bonkers. Like even when you're on my site, discoverlovematches.com, and I list the directory, yes, I have your main picture, but I also have the five words that best describe you. I have your intro. I have your city. I have your age. And, your, and there's just so much more to you. And you're talking about real questions that I have you answer. And I love it because clients so often go, wow, that really made me think. I'm like, that's the goal. <laughs> the goal is to get you thinking about how you're coming across. What does falling in love mean to you? Hobbies and goals. Talk about the person you want to meet. Let's dig in and really be authentic because I can tell you that you probably already met someone that could have been the love of your life, but you were too quick going right and left and wondering what's next and you missed out. And so show up for real things, show up for events, show up for activities, go sit and hang out at a coffee shop, go get a drink and sit up at the bar stool and look for people to start a conversation with. You never know where it's going to take you, but at least you know that you are in complete control of where it goes because you can, go ahead and leave. You don't have to wonder what the app is going to tell, what's going to pop up next, and who's going to see your random picture. What matters is that you're showing up. I am here to walk this journey with you. I'm here to support you. I'm here to make funny love special and romantic and beautiful like it has been for so many, so many, so many years. And so many of my success couples, because they stopped doing the massive search and honed in on what they really wanted, they became very present and we found their person. So go to discoverlovematches.com, learn more, and just decide, are you done just random dating or do you want to meet someone that has been selected for you, suggested for you, at least meet people that are of a quality filtering process, not just random anybody. Choose better for you so that your love can be found and discovered because that's what's going to be the most rewarding.
So let me know if you have any questions, add comments below. I'm here to support you every step.